The SNES Classic is out. It's going to bring back all my favorite 90s games. But it's 2017 and I really want to play some online co-op. So, I've decided to hack together my own online co-op for the SNES. And as we're going to find out, this setup's even more ridiculous than the length of this cable. Hey guys, my name is James and I'm the Technical Community Manager here at Parsec and before we dive into all the technical stuff, I thought it'd be cool to show you the gameplay first. So this is online co-op running on the SNES with Parsec. So what I've got here is my Windows 10 machine and it's got an HT60 Pro capture card in it and my SNES Classic is connected to that capture card. So that's what you can see full screen at the moment and I'm just using the, you know, the standard controller connected to the SNES Classic. Um, but I've already sent my friend a Parsec URL, so he's connected to my machine and his controls are all in there, we've set it all up um, and now it's ready to play. So I'm going to go into a game, in this case Mario Kart and I'm going to open it up and I go to a two player game and let's go Grand Prix and let's go 50cc class and accept that. With Parsec, basically they send their controls and they see a video stream from your PC at really low latency. So he's already selected his plan, I'm going to go with Mario and let's choose a, a map. Cool, excellent. So what we can see here is that like, because they're seeing an exact feed of what's going on and they're just sending their controls, it can be a really cool experience to add that like co-op play to games that would never support it, like don't have netcode or don't have anything that would enable like, local play to go online. So this is really good for stuff, you know, like, I mean, in this case, I've got Mario Kart on the SENS, and it's a really complicated way of doing it, but you could also play games like Cuphead and other kind of local co-op PC games online as well. Uh, but, you know, we've put a really big focus on having the lowest latency technology possible, um, because we feel like, you know, cloud gaming or gaming online has always had that bad rap for being kind of, kind of slow or laggy, um, and we're really trying to change that perspective. So, in the next part, I'm going to show you how to set up all these technical details. So you may have seen our previous video where we added online co-op to the Nintendo Switch using some uh, cool hardware and Parsec, our really low latency co-play software. Well, this time we've got the SNES and it's a little bit different. The difference here is that unlike the Nintendo Switch, there's no USB dongle that lets us remotely control the SNES console. So we need to be a bit smarter and think outside the box about how we're going to approach it. So we already know how to get video out of the SNES Classic. We just use the uh, HDMI port on the back of it and we plug it into the HD60 Pro, just like in the Switch video. So the first idea I had was to basically figure out what the protocol was of the controller. And I had a bright idea. If I can just simply touch these controller pads or these controller buttons, then I'm pretty much sorted. So if you've ever taken one of these apart before, you probably know that underneath these buttons there's a couple pads and then when you touch both of the pads together, um, it sends the controls to the console. So I decided to take the player two uh, controller apart and start applying voltages to the pads and see what happens. And I figured out if I send it the right way, I can control the individual buttons. And then I found this really cool script for the Raspberry Pi that basically lets you use an Xbox controller to control the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. I had to make a couple modifications to um, map all the buttons for the SNES controller to the Xbox controller, but I've added the script to the link in the video description below. Um, and that works really, really well if you're in the same physical location. So if you've got the Xbox controller plugged in directly into the Raspberry Pi, it works really well. But we're going to be doing this across the internet, so I had to add an extra layer. And the next part to that is the Titan 1. So basically we're going to set up the Titan 1 um, on the PC and we're going to plug it in in Xbox 360 mode to the Raspberry Pi. And then once that's in, we can map our controller. So now we're at the point where we can plug a controller into our PC and then map the controls on the Titan 1 through G-Tuner, which is the Windows software for that. Um, and then run the script on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then we can start sending controls to the SNES. So the next step of this process is basically to enable the Raspberry Pi to run headless. So I didn't really want to have to plug in an HDMI cable and a mouse and keyboard every time I wanted to run the script. So what I did was I enabled SSH on the Raspberry Pi and I created a batch file 
um, on Windows that basically runs a putty session and sends some commands, logs in and sends some commands to the Raspberry Pi, and that basically just starts the script. So anytime I have any trouble, I can just double click the batch file and it restarts the script and it's all good. After that, we need to externalize the Xbox controls from the Raspberry Pi. And for that, we're going to use the Titan 1, just like in the Nintendo Switch video. So, what we're going to do is we're going to set the Titan 1 to run an Xbox 360 mode, that's required for the script. And then we're going to plug in the mini USB cable on the Titan 1 to our workstation PC. And that's running G-Tuner, so what we're going to do is we're going to map an Xbox controller to the PC. And um, we're going to use a couple plugins there to enable that uh, basically to send controls from the workstation to the Raspberry Pi. After you've done all that wiring, all that crazy scripting and got all the accessories you need and you're all set up to go, the next step is pretty easy. You just need to go to our website, parsec.tv, sign up, download the app to your PC, get it running in host mode and uh, send a link to your buddy. And they'll be able to log in and if they've got an Xbox controller, they'll be able to um, press the button and it'll show up in your device manager. From there, you can uh, actually select that device as the input device for G-Tuner. Then at that point, you probably need to restart the script using that batch file, and you should, hopefully, be then able to control the SNES, or at least they can. So, wrapping up. This is a pretty cool project. Um, this is the first time I've really played with GPIO a lot, um, and it's, it's pretty cool, like, being able to script, like, pushing the voltages out, that's really fun. There's a couple improvements that we could definitely make. Um, one of them is that at the moment it's kind of like co-play only because someone needs to be physically here to press the reset button to go back to the main menu. I haven't figured out a way to you, use the commands on the controller to do that. Um, so I think at the moment, you know, if you want to go back to the main menu, you need to physically press the reset button or you need to solder the, the actual game console. But, um, you know, I don't really want to do mine because I might want to flip it on eBay later. Who, who knows? Um, and the next thing is that you could probably, I mean, this is a really bird's nest of wires. It's absolutely crazy. It uses a whole bunch of stuff, but I feel like you could make this whole little like wiring set up into a nice little package and it'll be a lot cooler. And if you're crazy enough to try this at home, I've left a very detailed set of instructions in the video description below. It's gonna go through what software you need, what configuration, what scripts, and what hardware you need to make it all happen. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you want to support more weird, wacky, crazy ideas like this, then subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's gonna really help us uh, keep going and push the boundaries of streaming technology. If you want to get started with Parsec now, you can download it for free from our website, parsec.tv, to your desktop. Or if you don't have your own gaming rig, you can hire a cloud gaming PC from us. Either one of them will let your friends log in and play games like these over the internet. And until next time, peace out.